Hey guys, I'm back with another book talk which actually goes along with my two previous book talks. So I'm finally wrapping up this series. I've been reading for the past month or so, given that I've had to um, space some other books in between reading them because I needed to read these for certain things. And yeah, so finally I am finishing the Perfect Chemistry Trilogy with the final book in the series, which is Chain Reaction by Simone Elkles. Still don't know how to say this name. Oh my goodness. Anyways, um, please excuse the ugly sticker stuff up here. I tried peeling off the price sticker and it partially came off, but now I can't seem to get this off. So if any of you guys out there watching know a little handy dandy trick on how to get like leftover sticker stuff, Please let me know in the comments so I can get this off because it's really starting to irritate me. Anyways, this is the third and final book in the Perfect Chemistry Trilogy. This book follows the youngest of the three Fuentes brothers. His name is Luis. Now, this book was definitely a little different, but I also had some problems with it. Like, I, I have had with the Pat previous two books. My problem with this series in general is that certain events seem to repeat themselves in all three of the books. The fact that all three brothers get involved in gang activity. I understand that in the first two books in the series, the brothers are already involved in gang activity, but the fact that in the second book, Carlos gets moved away from his gang and yet almost gets put back into another one and Luis just straight up chooses to be put into a gang. I found it very, like, just common knowledge that it was going to happen, that somehow a gang was going to be involved, and the brother that the story is about is going to be a go into the gang. And I just found that so predictable, like, even knowing that Luis is a really smart kid and he has, like, actual future plans for his life after high school, that he was somehow going to get sucked up into some type of gang-related activity. Also, another thing I found predictable was being shot, because in both the first two books, both Carlos and Alex are shot in a um, drug deal type situation. I knew that Luis was going to end up being shot at one point, was gang-related while he was shot, although it wasn't towards the end of the book like the first two stories were, and it didn't end up killing the bad guy. But it just, I found that so predictable and it kind of irritated me a little bit. But also there were a lot of different things about this one in particular compared to the other two that I really did like. Um, the first is that Nikki, the first would be the premise of Nikki and Luis's relationship. Now... In the previous two books, Kiara and Brittany had both been in the little goody two-shoes, little virgin girls that everybody looked up to and thought they could never do anything bad. Well, in this case, Nikki is not that. Nikki is kind of seen as a heartless bitch, and she's very blunt about a lot of things, and she's not very well liked by a lot of people at her school, which was definitely a nice change from the previous two girls we had followed in the series. Since she wasn't a version, it made this story not so like a cliche moment where the good girl falls for the bad boy and you know he takes her virginity. She had already lost it by this point and that was kind of refreshing not having to go through you know the whole I love you, I love you too, and blah blah blah. I also had some problems with the characters. Now Luis I really didn't have any problems with him. I really did like him. I think he's my favorite Fuentes brother, considering that he is smart, but he's also like street smart and you know, kind of an adrenaline junkie, which I find adrenaline junkies like really fascinating people. And also what I really loved about him is that he had plans for his life after high school. He was gonna go to college, he was gonna apply for NASA, he was going to be an astronaut up in space. He had so much planned and ready to go and he had it set, like he was in AP classes, he was making straight A's, like he was destined to follow his footsteps. And the fact that he wanted to go to Purdue University, which for those who don't know, 
Purdue is a very, very nice school located in Indianapolis, Indiana. My dad actually graduated from Purdue and for the longest time, I really wanted to go. So the fact that, like I said already, he had plans, like he knew what he was doing with his life and he was up to something better and he did not want to fall into his brother's footsteps really made me happy. Although he makes the stupid decision and I don't know why he decided he needed to join the Latino blood because that was a really stupid decision. It really made me mad that he was fixing to throw away his entire future because his supposed dad was the previous leader of this gang. So I really wish he wouldn't have done that. Although then again, we probably wouldn't have had a very interesting story. I also had a really big problem with Nikki in this book. And normally, yes, I had some minor issues with the previous female characters. Brittany was too perfect. Kira, I actually pretty much liked her. But Nikki, it was just the way she was written I had issues with. Like, in the beginning of the book, after they have re-met senior year in high school, we are told and kind of pick up from everybody else at the school that Luis has contact with that Nikki is a heartless bitch. And basically, what I thought it was was that she goes around and just messes with guys. But that doesn't seem to be the case once we started writing her. Because the way she was written and the way she was acting and the way people talked about her, that's exactly how she sounded. And so that's what I thought. I'm like, oh, so now we've got the good boy chasing the bad girl. This will be an interesting read. But then it seemed like halfway through the book, Nikki was starting to be written from a different type of standpoint. I understand she had previous issues with her ex-boyfriend Marco, and she has trust issues and relationship issues and all this stuff, and she feels like love is no longer a thing. But she was no longer like the heartless bitch that you were led on to be. She didn't really mess around with guys like it made it seem like she did. And I just don't know why, it just kind of irritated me with that. Also, it really irritated me that Luis and Nikki seemed to date really fast. There wasn't much of a like put up fight as to, oh no, I really don't wanna date you. It was just kind of like, you know, oh, hey, let's date now and there wasn't much fight. Like, I felt like there were with the previous two books, that there was a lot of chasing going around. And this one wasn't really there. It was just kind of like, oh, I don't like you. I can't let my walls down. I can't love you. I can't be with him. I don't want to be with him. Oh, actually, let's go ahead and date. I just, I felt like they were too fast to date. And then I also felt like with this story, the relationship was a little rushed. It may just be my opinion. Overall, this was a decent read. I liked it. It was a nice wrap up. And I'm pretty sure that my favorite part in this entire book is the epilogue at the end. That always seems to be my favorite part of these books is the epilogue because, you know, the book ends and it has a nice ending and then it gives you a little something extra in the future so you see how, like, everything turned out, which made me really happy. And I think this one being the last book, this epilogue was definitely my favorite. Um, especially with Luis's son and his, um, hockey championship game and everything that goes down. But my, but out of the entire epilogue, the very, very end part where it's talking about the Fuentes brothers' mother and how she did end up marrying their neighbor, the cop, and how nothing makes her happier than when their entire family gets together and seeing that her boys came from nothing and have made such a great future for themselves it just makes her happy and she never thought she would see this day let alone see all three of them still surviving it just made me so happy that like people really can overcome the odds and i really love that this again this was a decent read out of the three books i would have to pick um rules of attraction as my favorite book i don't know why just kiara and carlos are probably my favorite couple they were really fun to read from and yeah, so this one is good. I gave this a three out of five stars, like I have for the rest of the books. It wasn't bad, it wasn't horrible, it wasn't the best I've read. It was a really nice read. And it was very interesting to read books about gangs. I don't think I've ever read a book about like actual gangs. Let me know your thoughts on this book in the comments below and we can, you know, chat about more things down below. Before I do my sign off, I just wanted to ask you guys real quick, I kind of want to make a Q&A video. Does that sound like a good idea? Should I not? Should I just shut up and, you know, leave YouTube forever? No, 
no, I wouldn't do that. I'm just, whatever. Um, if you think it's a good idea and I should make one, give this video a giant thumbs up. I will see you guys next time with a book talk top five Wednesday or tag video. Until then, I'm Chrissy. Goodbye.